If you'd like to try what we make at Superstition, it's as easy as going to our website, superstitionmeadery.com, clicking on Web Store, and you're shopping. Make sure you follow us on social media because we release new products almost every week, and you might just find your next favorite craft beverage. Cheers. So today we're gonna to talk about the difference between barrel aging and aging on wood. So at Superstition, we absolutely love barrels and the magic that they can impart to all of these different things that we do, whether it's a meat or a cider, or even a wine. And we trade barrels with breweries and meaderies around the country. We use brand new oak that has all different toast levels. We use spirits barrels, we love barrels. But sometimes what you wanna do for for your goals, to achieve your goals, is actually do what we call aging on wood. So the alcohol in what we make is, is a solvent and it works on all of the different esters and phenols, chemical compounds and tannins that make wood wood and can extract those flavors and aromas and create something that otherwise would never exist. So, so Zeke, what's the difference, like if you're reading a label and we're talking about on wood versus in wood or barrel aging? Well, so the main thing, if we're talking about aging on wood, is you're gonna use some kind of, uh, like a wood structure. So it might be cubes, we have spirals here. Um, so this is cypress. We have some heavy toast French oak. And there's a couple different ways that you can process the wood to kind of achieve the same level of contact that you might get in a barrel. So these are gonna be cut into spirals, and the whole point with that is to increase the surface area so you get that same level of contact but you might actually get it in a shorter amount of time. You could do cubes, you could do chips, you could just do actual planks of wood. There's all kinds of stuff that you could utilize and that's made specifically for aging. Um, and one of the benefits of aging on wood is you get a quicker contact time, but you don't have the same level of oxidation that you get in a barrel. So wood is porous and you have some micro oxidation that happens inside of a barrel. So if we wanted to have, say, a fresher fruit character in a mead with some oak, then we might turn to something like this, where we don't need to have it in the barrel for a year, and the fruit's gonna start to mellow and change over that time. Instead, we might add some oak spirals and we'll get oak quicker, but we get the same flavor. And this, this spiral, you see how it's set up? It's actually designed so that you could go right through the bung of a barrel. So on the back of this barrel, there's a hole. It's always in the top of which the biggest stave on a barrel. And you can drop this inside because sometimes after four to five years of using the same barrel for different aging products, you may, you may get to a point where you have what's called a neutral barrel. So you can still have flavor from the meat or the wine or the beer or whatever's in the staves or the bourbon, but you're not really gonna be getting any more oak qualities out of that wood so you can just drop these into a neutral barrel and now you're you're also doing that sort of blend of I'm really intentional on in what flavor we're putting in but maybe you want that micro oxidation yeah so there's so many different combinations and ways to use wood and you know what's kind of cool when you look at these spirals this was like you know um, inch and a quarter or whatever thickness uh, dowel at some point and you can see it ran through a machine that just carved this spiral around it and that way all the liquid has more places to touch the wood. So sometimes there's cubes and chips and there's even like it looks like sawdust some folks oh, use yeah. but we like these spirals and they're easy to work with and easy to, to really manage what we're doing. So, so this year for our guild and today's guild day, happy guild day by the way. Happy guild so day. Cheers to that. And the theme was that Every product we made was brand new, and every product was aged on wood, not in wood, and every different wood that we chose was a wood we had never worked with. So, which is your favorite this year? Uh, so, I really like this one that we're drinking. It's a Monte's Incantation. Uh, so, if you guys follow Superstition, you've probably had a Monte before, and this is a little riff on that. Um, same Belgian dark candy syrup base with mesquite honey, and then we use coffee, and we added cardamom and cinnamon. To this one. Now the key with this and the wood that we chose was this heavy toast French oak. So nice dark very spicy notes that come from it and you almost get a little bit of roast out of that. So it really helps to amplify the coffee, really brings the spice out and of the six meads that we did this year I think that the heavy toast French oak with the Monte's incantation is probably conceptually at the end of the day the most integrated of all the six that we did. Um, and there's a lot of fun things that you can use. That's the other nice thing about using wood adjuncts. This right here is cypress, so it's not even oak. And this adds some notes of yellow cake. Uh, it's a little bit sweeter. We used Spanish cedar this year as well, which added some like nice light white pepper, a little bit of grapefruit, things like that. 
But of all of them, I'd say this one takes the cake for me. You know, when you're talking about toasting oak, you, you're gonna chemically change the compound of the wood. And so I like to tell the story about how lignin's one of the like fibrousy components that makes wood wood. And when you cook it at a certain level, you chemically change it into vanillin. And when you go past that to something that's heavy toasted, you're expecting to get roast, maybe some coffee, maybe some smoke, maybe some chocolate. And it just depends on the wood. It depends even on the tree or the forest and the terroir over anywhere from 80 to 150 years that goes into growing an oak tree for this to, to, to determine exactly what this is gonna be. And it smells spicy. And this is a spicy mead. And so when you're deciding which wood to use, which barrel to use, you want something that's gonna work together. Sometimes you wanna contrast or add something that's yeah. not there, but when you have, and, and that's certainly doing that as well, but I can just smell that spiral and you're getting that spice. And then you get spice in here. And it's a really dark mead, that caramelized Belgian dark candy sugar is such a beautiful thing to work with. It makes my favorite beers after all, and some of my favorite meads. And when you have something that, that's that strong of a flavor, you need something to stand up to it to, uh, to, to work together. Absolutely, and I think one of my favorite things about this project this year and utilizing the wood was the ability to add structure in a different place. And um, so working with a lot of different fruits, you can pull some tannin from that, but most stuff's not gonna be as tannic as a grape or maybe a crab apple. So being able to utilize an oak adjunct like this or a wood adjunct, we can get some tannin and add some structure and it completely changes the feel of these drinks as you drink them. Um, so helps with you know perceived mouth feel, whether it might be a little sweeter and you add some oak and it could perceive a little bit drier. Um, so I think a case I get that blades, in the finish. Yeah. Yeah, as I'm, as I'm sipping on this, you know, I took a sip maybe 30, 40 seconds ago. I can still taste the product, which is one of the often common denominators in a really good mead, beer, whatever you're drinking. But the, the tannin that's coming from this, I know what a Monte would be like without it. And it, 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 it elevates it. it. It adds like uh, kind of like a tingle to the, the top middle of your tongue. There's, there's a tannic quality and a roast that's coming from this. But I, I, I man, I just get that spice in the nose. It's mm -hmm. so nice. This would be really good with like a grilled pork chop. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, with like some kind of like tropical spicy mm -hmm. salsa on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, and a little bit of char on the outside. Good All work, right, I'm dude. I'm hungry now. All right. Thank you.